Hey y'all, Jonathan Hill. It's been a minute since I've posted um, a video on High Flying. I've just been really busy with, uh, I got a job this summer and school has been kicking my butt. Um, so I haven't had much time to upload anything, um, but my Fourth of July show did go really good and uh, I did video the stash this year and it was really cool. So I'll, I guess, post a photo of it now. Um, so, I have someone coming in from out of town um, in a few days. They've always wanted to see one of my fireworks shows, so I'm doing a small show for them. Um, and I kind of wanted to record it and just kind of show you what goes into making a backyard fireworks show. So without further ado, I'm going to show you the product I have picked out for the show. This is all of the stuff I have picked out. Um, I guess I'll start over here with the cakes. I've got a 16 shot Deadpool by Smoking Alien Fireworks, a 35 shot Stugots by Hardcore Pyro Fireworks, that's a very good one, a 12 shot Made in America by World Class Fireworks that has good crackle in it, a 12 shot Midnight Sunborn by uh, World Class as well, Big Breaks, a 9 shot Voodoo by Raccoon, very nice uh, willow effects. Up here I've got a 25 shot Raccoon City, that's a really good one, pretty effects. A 36 shot Don't Be a Hog 500 gram cakes, this will be my finale cake. Such a good cake if you know what it does. A 30 shot Rainbow by Winda, kind of a bad cake in my opinion, but it is super colorful so I got it. A 24 shot Angry Jellyfish by Smoking Alien. I uh, never shot this brand along with uh, the Deadpool cake, I've never shot Smoking Alien. So I picked it up because it has uh, jellyfish effects, which I've never shot. For the shells, these are miscellaneous shells from my 4th of July show. I have two of the Growlow 5-inch cans by World Class, an Echo in the Eel canister shell uh, by Winda, and I don't remember what that is. And then this is a box of the 5-inch uh, Excalibur Platinum shells. You can see them in there, similar to the Growlow shells except they have different effects so that'll be the main shells on the show and I got a box of the 5 inch Nishiki Blast canister shells by Raccoon uh, beautiful brocades in this one so that'll be fun and then in this box um, a million rockets I've got anything from these Mars rockets if you know what those do um, to these Welcome to the Jungle Rockets. I've got a million of both. I've got a case of each, so that'll be cool. And I may include a few things from this bin, which is just miscellaneous stuff. Probably not, but, um, this is just fountains and stuff. This is just fountains and stuff, but we've got a few things like Double Troubles, some red and green, some aliens. So, yeah, if you know, you know. Um, that's the stuff that's going in the show. So next thing I have to do is take the plastic tops off of all of these cakes. Um, as you can see, Stugatz already has it off and you can see all of the cardboard tubes exposed. Um, the reason that this one is already off is because this was supposed to be in my 4th of July show and I didn't have the igniter in correctly so it didn't go off. But that's what I need all these cakes to look like. Um, because if I shoot the show with the plastic on top of these cakes, all of this stuff gets left behind in the field and it sucks to clean up. So just before the show goes, I'm going to take the tops off of all of the cakes. So you'll see what I do is, um, excuse the uh, itching noise, my dog is itching right next to the camera. Um, but you'll see what I do is we have the plastic wrap on top. I just get a knife, make a cut, just kind of follow down along one side, follow down on the other side. Usually I'll just do one side up here. That way I can just kind of whip it back. And when I do that, I can see the tubes exposed inside of there. Just rip that off. That's trash. 
and the top right here is ready to shoot. So this cake is a little bit different. As you can see, the fuse protector is on top of the cake. Some of these kind of cakes, they have the fuse that runs on top, and then it goes to quick match down into the first shot. So I'm going to show you how to safely remove the top. Just cut it like you would any other normal cake. Just be careful not to uh, cut the fuse though. So cut that part off. We're going to rip the top paper off. And once you get here, I usually like to take the fuse protector off so that I can locate the fuse, which is great. Here. So that's the fuse. Right there. And then I'll kind of pull that. Just kind of pull the paper off around it. It should be good. Take a little colorful disc off. There you go. That's the 36 shot cake. And then in a few moments, I'll show you how this fuse goes down into the quick match and how to poke into this cake for a firing system. Now in the firework industry, uh, we call these kind of cakes angled cakes or sometimes fan cakes. And you'll see unlike most normal cakes, such as Raccoon City right here, you can see this is a square top, all of the tubes lay flat. Whereas Rainbow, all of the tubes are kind of angled. So if you can see that, the tubes actually lay at different angles. These ones are straight up. These have a slight angle on them and these have a significant angle on them. So when you light the fuse, it shoots the fireworks in the fan effect. So it shoots each shell out at a different angle. And so if you ever see a cake where the side, it's not like a full box, the side is kind of cut down at an angle, usually that indicates that the cake is a fanned cake or an angled cake. So you can see right here, you can see the different angles on the tubes. So I've got Rainbow by Winda. That's one of my angled cakes. And then I have Angry Jellyfish by Smoking Alien. That's another angled cake. You can see the sides kind of slant down. And on a lot of angled cakes on the top wrap, you can see it has a warning that says, for the best view, please place this side towards the audience. The reason they do that is if your audience is where the camera is located, you want this cake to be lined up facing the audience. That way when you light the fuse, it shoots the shells out the way the cake was intended and designed, and the audience get the best view. So if we cut into this cake, you can see by lifting that up and tearing that off, you can see this cake also has angles on it. So anytime you see a cake with a angle like that, just know that it's most likely a fan cake. Also, while I'm doing this, I might as well just uh, unbox these shells that I have. Um, let me zoom out just a tiny bit. Oh, it already is zoomed out. Um, so these are the shells I have. Just loose. I've got, I don't remember what this is. I think this is a raccoon shell. This is an Echo in the Eel canister shell, and these are two Growler shells. Um, I'll show you in a minute uh, what I do to these shells when I'm fusing them. But for now, I need to unbox this Nishiki Blast shell kit. So you just pop the top off the box. Open that up. Pull down the sides. Usually they always have a warning label instead of the box telling you how to use the shells. And then they usually have a styrofoam insult inside the box. You can pull this up and out. And then that's going to be your shell kit. We're going to usually have six canister shells in a tube. So what I like to do is I like to get the tube out first. So I'll put the tape. Tape comes off, 
and out comes the canister tube. So um, you can see that's where you load the canister shells into. When you do that, you load it, make sure it says top. It says top on there. Make sure you load it in that way. Just gently put it down in there to where the fuse is sticking out. So you light a fuse and it hits the left charge and launches it out. So I'll throw the tube aside. Then to get these canister shells out, I'm just gonna, actually I can just, oh, there goes my knife, which I need right now. I've gotta get the knife, kind of cut along here, make sure not to cut those fuses. And then you can open that plastic up and get all of your beautiful Nashiki blast shells out of the packaging. There we go. Alright, so I need to unbox these Excalibur Platinum shells. So first what I'll do, pop the top open, fold the cardboard back, um, in these 24 kit uh, canister shell packs, you're going to have six different sleeves. A sleeve is a pack of six canister shells, and you're going to have four different uh, tubes. So World Class usually includes these uh, HDPE, high dens density polyethylene, I believe, um, tubes. These are the strongest tubes you can buy on the consumer market. Um, this one has a sleeve on the bottom, so if your canister shell explodes upside down in the tube, it's not going to explode everywhere. Um, so this kit is going to come with all of these, which you can actually use in your shows. And then when you take these out, you're going to have six of those. So you should have another pack here. Another tube. We've got another tube. Oh, come on. It's stuck down in there. Another pack. Another pack. and another tube. So that's gonna come with four of these tubes. See one, two, three, four. And four packs of six canister shells. So um, let me unbox these and then I'll show you all of the canister shells I have for the show. All right, so I've got all my canister shells. I've got 24 of these Excalibur Platinum shells, uh, six of these Nashiki Willow shells, or Nashiki uh, Blast shells, Barracoon, and then some extra shells. Um, and what I do on these shells is much like the cakes with the tops cut off of them, is I take the uh, like plastic wrap off of them, I just cut it off. That way when the shell goes up in the sky and it breaks, um, all of this plastic wrap isn't coming down on the ground because one, it's not very good at biodegrading and two, it's a pain in the butt to clean up. Um, whereas everything left is just going to be cold bold, which biodegrades fine. And then these plastic caps I can go and pick up pretty easily. Alright, I've got my racks. I've got an 18 shot angled rack with HDPE tubes in it. This was made by Palmetto State Pyros. They make amazing racks. And then I've got a 25 shot milk crate with HDPE tubes in there. That's not going to be used for canister shells on this show, it's going to be used for uh, rockets. Then I've got two of these Scoby Dog or oh, Musket Shots um, by uh, Brian, aka Redbeard in the file community. He makes a really cool rack. So I've got one over here with some fiberglass tubes in it, one over there with more fiberglass tubes in it. So this will be used in the finale. I'm just going to do a small uh, finale with some canister shells. So I'll do 12 shells. And then I've got a full shot uh, homemade little 
uh, HTPE rack, so that'll be, I guess, like midway through the show. Alright, all of the canister shells are on the racks. This entire rack is uh, Excalibur Platinum shells. You can see I took the uh, wrapping off, so now it's just cold bold. So all of that is Excalibur uh, Platinum shells or Premium shells. Let's see what all these. Excalibur Platinum. Yeah, so those are all Excalibur Platinum shells except for the last three, which are on the Shiki Blast shells. I'm going to quick fuse those as a mini finale for this rack. Uh, these two. Uh, musket shot racks. Um, this is going to all be quick fused as part of the finale. So we got Excalibur uh, Platinum shells, that's a Growler shell, and then these three are going to be uh, Nishiki Blast shells. And then this is just miscellaneous canister shells that I'll probably put pink fuse on. So what I'm doing now is on all of the cakes, they have little fuse protectors that go over the fuse. So, what I'm doing is I'm taking them off, and you can see where the fuse protector was and where I took it off, and now the fuse is sticking out. And then after I do this, I'm going to poke into the cakes and insert the ignite holes. Alright, so, since I'm using a firing system for this show, I have to use ignite holes, which are these things. So, it has a little cap on the top, and I hook it into the firing system, so when I press a button, this shoots out a spark and instantly sets off the cake. So, what I have to do to put this inside of there successfully is I already took the fuse out. I found where the fuse went into the false tube. So this is the first shot of the cake. And then I got a brass screw. The reason I'm using a brass screw is because brass is a soft metal and it will not spark. So, because of that, um, I can use this. If I used a normal screw, and I put it in there, it could possibly spark and set this cake off inside my garage, which I don't want to do. So, I've got my brass screw. Just poke it into the hole where the full sheaves would be. Kind of round it out. Make sure it's big enough for the igniter. And I'm going to get my igniter. Find that hole. And just push it through inside of the full shot of the cake. Going to get me some duct tape and pull it off of the roll which is usually the hardest part of this process okay well it doesn't want to come off the roll put that put that over the hole that I just created that way no lift paddle is going to leak out I'm going to get a little more duct tape, cut it again, and I'm going to get this piece, I'm going to get the igniter that's just sitting there, and I'm going to tape it to the side of the cake just like that. So now the igniter is taped to the side of the cake. The reason I do this is when I'm pulling the cakes around, when I'm hauling them off to the shoot site. I don't want this dangling around and I don't want it to um, trip someone and I don't want it to rip that out. So I just tape it to the side of the cake for convenience. And now it's just like that. And if I take the camera off of the tripod, you can now see um, this is just connected like that. There we go. And that is inside of there, and this cake is ready to be hooked up to the firing system and shot. Alright, so all of the cakes have um, igniters on them. They're all plugged in and then taped to the side. So when I bring the cakes out to the field, I just need to take the tape off of there, roll the igniter out and plug it into the firing system. So all of the cakes are done. Now I just need to fuse these shell racks and I should be good to go. So what I do to connect the fuse from the canister shell to the main fuse is get the uh, canister shell and I get the fuse kind of bend it like that. Yeah, just like that. You want to make sure the front of the canister shell fuse is going the opposite way of the fuse, the main fuse. Then I get a piece of duct tape and I just tape it like that, make sure it's pressed down firmly, 
There we go. There, that way that fuse is going to run through there. And it'll get through there. That's a clean example over there. That's kind of a messy one. But a lot of people uh, prefer uh, tape. Some people prefer zip ties. I just use both because it's kind of a fail safe. If the tape doesn't work, the zip tie will. If the zip tie doesn't, usually the tape will. And then after I tape it, just get a zip tie. Put the zip tie there. Put the zip tie up by the front. Like oh. Just like that. And that should make a good connection. Because the fuse is gonna run this way. It's gonna catch the open end of the artillery shell fuse that's gonna bond together. And even if it doesn't catch that end, it has all of that room to catch, and then it'll just connect. So when you run it like this, it should look like that. And usually what I'll do is I'll get some uh, snip things and I'll just cut the ends of the zip ties off. As you can see here. You don't really have to cut the end of the zip tie off. It just looks better that way. It looks clean. It looks nice. So I usually do it. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do with, uh, with all of these canister shells. This row is just going to be pink fused. Um, uh, those six shot ones, that's going to be um, fast fused and then the big 18 shot rack. Over there is going to be just normal visco fused. Alright, so everything is set up, fused together. All I have to do is put it out in the field. I've got all of the cakes, those are all queued up. I've got um, all of the shells. All of that is fused together, and then I even threw in the uh, jungle rocket. I was going to fill every uh, tube with them, but I ended up not doing that just because it looks dangerous. So I just kind of made a V out of it and quick fused it. So I'm going to go set all this stuff out in the field, and I will show you the setup in a minute. Alright, so the setup is I've got Rainbow going first into Deadpool 16 shot. That's going into Raccoon City 25 shot, going into Made in America 12 shot, into Angry Jellyfish uh, 24 shot, into Voodoo 9 shot, into Midnight Sunborn 12 shot. And then it's going to go into these canister shells, and it's going to go into Stugots 35 shots, uh, 36 shot Don't Be a Hog, into the finale, which is going to be uh, the canister shells into the Welcome to the Jungle Rocket. It's going to be good.
that was cool.